story recapped here. Today, I'm going to show you an action, fantasy, horror film called Constantine. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. A man digs through rubble in a desert area and finds an old spearhead wrapped in a Nazi flag. As soon as he unwraps the flag, he's taken over by an entity and starts moving, void of free will. As he crosses the road, a car slams into him, the car crumbles and the man gets up and continues walking. In John Constantine's world, heaven and hell are not only real but exist in dimensions parallel to the human world at a different plane of existence. John is an exorcist working with his apprentice, Chaz, finding and banishing demons that misbehave in the mortal plane. In a small apartment in Los Angeles, a mother prepares breakfast for her sick daughter. She collapses to the floor, screaming, upon seeing her daughter levitating and snarling. The family immediately seeks help from men of faith to save their daughter. John enters the apartment, and Father Hennessy meets with him. He tells John he's found one that John has been seeking. Hennessy tells John he failed to exorcise whatever is inside the young girl and has called on him for help. The possessed girl is tied up to her bed, and John opens a window, letting sunlight in. He produces a talisman that casts a shadow on the young girl, and the girl snaps at him. John presses the amulet onto the girl's forehead, and it immediately starts sizzling. The girl begins convulsing and screaming as John mutters an incantation. The girl stops shaking, but a silhouette pops out from her neck, looking ready to tear out of the girl's body. John realizes he must hurry to exorcise the demon and asks for a mirror. The family gets a large mirror and helps hold it above the girl. John smashes a window and asks Chaz to move the parked car below. John has the mirror tied to a pulley above the window and advises everyone in the room to shield their eyes. One of the men takes a peek, and he starts screaming, his hair turning gray. John uncovers the girl's eyes, and the demon escapes, getting trapped in the mirror. John orders Hennessy to pull the mirror, but it doesn't fit through the window. John takes over, trying to pull the mirror out, and sees the demon trying to escape. He puts all his weight in the rope, and the mirror flies out the window, falling onto the car, smashing to pieces. John steps out of the room and sees a sketch drawing of what looks like a spearhead and recognizes it as the Spear of Destiny, the same spear the man earlier found in the desert. John tells Hennessy that the exorcism was not standard, and he vaguely predicts something big will happen. John leaves, and Chaz drives him home. Police detective, Angela Dodson, confesses to a priest. She tells him that she's killed another criminal. She's concerned about the number of killings she's done, saying it feels natural. She always seems to know precisely where these bad men are and know the exact moment when she should pull the trigger. She wonders if there's something wrong with her, and the priest tells him God has something planned for her. At home, she has a dream of waking up from a hospital bed. She hears the name, Isabel, whispered before she gets up, sneaking up the stairs to the hospital roof. She removes her medical tag, letting it loose in the wind before she jumps. She falls, smashing through a glass roof into a pool of water. She floats momentarily before waking up back in her bed, breathing heavily. The following morning, John Constantine gets an x-ray of his lungs, and a doctor tells him he has an advanced form of terminal lung cancer, only having a short time left to live. In the same hospital, Angela arrives at the scene of a suicide. She uncovers the corpse and the woman looks exactly like her. Isabel is her twin sister who had been admitted to the hospital as a mental patient. Her colleague tells her Isabel jumped from the roof, but Angela says she knows Isabel and she's not the one to kill herself. John's friend, Beeman, arrives at John's apartment with an excited grin. He brings with him a plethora of items and equipment for John. Beeman gives John bullet shavings from an assassination attempt on the Pope, holy water from the River of Jordan, and a screech beetle that repels demons. Beeman asks what the new assignment is about, and John tells him about the exorcism. John says he saw a demon soldier trying to exit from the young girl's body into the human realm. Beeman is surprised to hear this, knowing that demons can only control humans and possess them but can never enter the human physical realm. Just to be sure, John asks Beeman to do some research into this phenomenon. John and Chaz then head to a church, and John again runs into Angela. Angela speaks with a priest while John goes straight for Gabriel. John sees Gabriel's dark wings and refers to it as a half-breed. Gabriel knows why John has come and tells John angels still keep track of the most wayward souls. Angela asks the priest to give Isabel a Catholic funeral, but the priest says the bishop has decided against it. Since Isabel died of suicide and is considered a mortal sin, she cannot be allowed a Catholic burial. Angela tries to reason, but the priest tells her there's nothing he can do. John tells Gabriel about an influx of soul travel in the mortal realm and asks Gabriel if God can extend his life. Gabriel laughs, finding John's determination to get into heaven a lost cause. John reminds Gabriel of all the demons and hell minions he has banished and sent back to hell. He considers his service a guarantee into the gates of heaven. Gabriel answers, that all John has done is not enough. Self-sacrifice and belief is the only thing that will get John into heaven. John complains that he's already done so much sacrifice, and he believes in God. But Gabriel points out that John only knows of God's existence, but John doesn't believe in the Almighty. John argues he's pulled demons out of children to save their lives, but Gabriel counters that John has only done this for his benefit so that he'll be allowed into heaven. Meanwhile, Father Hennessy runs his hands through several newspapers, hearing the news articles in his head as he touches them. He goes through a pile of papers before focusing on one, the suicide of a person with a mental health condition, Isabel. Angela reviews footage of Isabel's death and hears her mutter Constantine's name. She recognizes the name as the rude man in the church. As John smokes, 
he sees someone approach him, and he realizes it's a demon covered in all sorts of insects. The demon attacks John, sending him flying across the road. The demon then warns John to leave the demons alone. John tries to repel the demon using the screeching beetle, and the demon gets hit by an oncoming van. John then meets with Chaz, and the pair head to Midnight's nightclub. Inside the nightclub, John sees half-breeds interacting with one another in peace. John heads to the back room, where he meets Papa Midnight. Midnight is a holy man who has sworn to neutrality, taking neither the side of heaven nor hell. John tells him that a full-fledged demon had attacked him earlier. Midnight considers this impossible as demons cannot cross over to the human realm. This is the rule both sides must agree on to maintain balance. The two are interrupted when a demon half-breed, Balthazar, enters the room. As he plays with his coin, he addresses Constantine. John gets insulted and threatens to exorcise him back to hell. Midnight steps in, warning both of them that no hostilities can happen inside the nightclub. John heads home and Angela knocks at his door. She has tracked him down and is asking for his help. Angela informs John that she believes her sister Isabel had been murdered. Angela explains believes that her sister had been brainwashed into committing suicide. She further stresses that Isabel was a devout Catholic and would never have taken her own life. John still refuses to help, and Angela leaves. John sees shadows from his window going after Angela, and he chases after her. John decides Angela's case may have something to do with what's happening in heaven and hell. He tells Angela about the existence of heaven and hell, but not in the way most people believe it. Angela scoffs at the thought and says she believes people are evil and need no other motivation. John then agrees but asks her to consider that people can be capable of both good and evil, but sometimes, get a little nudge from one of the two sides. The lights suddenly turn off, and the pair are stuck in darkness and John takes out a piece of cloth. They hear loud gusts of wind from unseen beings flying overhead. John lights the fabric, and a large fire blazes to life, spreading light and exposing the demons surrounding them. The demons are burned, screeching, and flying away. Angela vomits from the shock of what she had seen. John theorizes that demons could be after Angela, not him. John asks Angela if she genuinely believes that Isabel would never commit suicide. Angela stands her notion that Isabel must have been murdered. To know whether Isabel had committed suicide, John must journey into hell to find her soul. At Angela's apartment, John prepares a basin of water and suspends his feet in them. He asks Angela to leave, and she complies. Constantine takes Isabel's cat and stares into its eyes to establish a connection with Isabel's soul. Constantine's perception of time slows down. As time comes to a complete standstill, John finds himself in hell. He takes out Beeman's holy water and keeps it closed for a quick escape. He makes his way through the hellish landscape as fiery winds and scorched earth surround him. Finally, John sees Isabel at the edge of a building, and she calls out to him. Demons approach them from all sides, and Isabel takes off her medical tag. It flies in the wind, and Constantine tries to catch it. He runs after the flying tag, but the demons see him. As Isabel falls from the edge, Constantine reaches for the tag, and the demons swarm him. As he catches the tag, he smashes the holy water on his chest and appears back in Isabel's apartment. John realizes Angela and Isabel were twins and tells Angela that Isabel had committed suicide and hands her the medical tag. Father Hennessy finds Isabel's corpse at the morgue. He grabs her arm and tries to read into her memories but a mark suddenly appears on Isabel's wrist. Hennessy collapses to the ground in fear upon seeing this symbol. He tries to drink from his liquor flask, but the liquid doesn't reach his mouth. He finds a store next door and tries to drink from wine bottles, but the liquor stays in the bottle. He smashes several bottles open, but the alcohol still refuses to flow out. Hennessy falls to the floor, choking. He grabs a bottle opener and stabs his palm. Balthazar appears, playing with his coin, watching Hennessy suffer. Hennessy then starts choking from booze, the liquor flowing out of his mouth. Balthazar had manipulated him into thinking he couldn't drink anything, but was in fact, drinking everything he had open. Hennessy dies drowned from alcohol. John explains to Angela that as a kid, he had seen demons and other evil entities. His parents, not knowing what to do, had him treated, which, in turn, made the situation worse. Unable to cope with what's happening to him, the young Constantine commits suicide. He was officially dead for two minutes, but in hell, time moves differently, and he felt like he had been there for a lifetime. When he returns to life, he realizes that everything he could see is real. Both heaven and hell exist simultaneously on earth, at the same time, but in different planes of reality. To maintain control over humans, half-breeds like Gabriel and Balthazar were created. These can give whispers to humans. Some can provide bursts of courage, while others can provide excruciating fear and dread. Angela then gets a call about Father Hennessy's death, and the two head to the scene. John sees Hennessy and notices a bloody mark on his palm. Hennessy had carved out the symbol he had seen on Isabel on his palm for Constantine to see. John takes the symbol and asks Beeman to research it. John tries to look for clues in Isabel's room. He believes Isabel would have been smart enough to leave a clue for Angela. He says the connection between twins is strong, and he forces Angela to try and remember anything that can help with the case. Angela then remembers how they'd leave one another secret messages as kids as a unique way of communicating. She exhales but her breath fogs up a window, revealing something written. John sees the message Corinthians 17. As they drive, Beeman communicates with them through the phone and explains that the Bible they should refer to is the Bible from hell. 
According to the Hell Bible, Corinthians 17 talks of a son of the devil that will bring everlasting darkness upon humanity when unleashed. The symbol on Isabel's wrist is the sign of Mammon, the son of the devil. The Bible says that Mammon wants to forge his kingdom of hell, trumping that of Satan's. For this to happen, Mammon must possess a powerful psychic and must be brought into this world by a divine being. Before Beeman could finish, he suspects something is coming for him. He hangs up the phone, and insects start coming out of his eye. John and Angela rush to Beeman but are too late. They see Beeman dead, covered in insects, spewing out of his mouth and nose. The man carrying the Spear of Destiny is seen walking to a car. He smashes the window before stealing it and driving towards Los Angeles. Angela finally reveals that she, too, had seen things when she was young. When she saw Isabel getting an outcast and being treated for mental illness, she denied seeing the demons. As she got older, her vision slowly disappeared. She feels guilty, as she feels like she abandoned Isabel when she needed her. She wants to experience hell firsthand, knowing her sister is in there, suffering. John agrees, and they fill a bathtub with water. Angela lies underwater, and John holds her down. Angela starts running out of breath and squirms. She tries to get Constantine off of her, and she starts to drown. Time starts slowing down for Angela, and in a split second, she journeys to hell and back. She finally understands how she could always tell where the criminals were and when to pull the trigger. She suddenly gets up and runs to Beeman's office. She reaches down and finds Balthazar's coin. John arrives at Balthazar's penthouse, and John blows through the wall, throwing Balthazar back. Balthazar pounces on John and starts choking him. John reaches into his suit and pulls out brass knuckles emblazoned with holy crosses. John gets the upper hand and subdues Balthazar. John stands over Balthazar, preparing to exorcise him, but John threatens he would instead bless him and send Balthazar's soul to heaven. Terrified, Balthazar tells John that the key to Mammon's arrival on the human realm is the Spear of Destiny. Angela appears behind John, and Balthazar laughs, saying his only goal was to get Angela to the building. John then shoots Balthazar. John and Angela then make their way down, discussing the Spear of Destiny and how it plays into Mammon's plan. A figure arrives, standing over Balthazar, and Balthazar asks to be revived as he's done what was asked. But the figure simply watches Balthazar waste away. Angela realizes that with Isabel dead, she would be the powerful psychic needed for Mammon's birth. She suddenly feels a strange sensation. Before they could react, Angela is pulled away through several walls of concrete. John chases after her, but Angela is dragged across the building. She flies through the night sky, and John is left alone. John then forces his way into Midnight's room and declares that he desperately needs to use the chair. Midnight is insulted and pins John to a wall, digging into his chest. John tells Midnight that none of the two sides are following the rules anymore, and his neutrality has been removed, as the demons are already making a move. Midnight finally agrees. They head into Midnight's artifact storage and find a wooden chair used for electric capital punishment. John takes off his shoes, and Midnight wets the floor. Midnight then takes a live bulb, opening it, and readies himself to stab electricity through John. As Midnight connects the bulb with John, John sees the man carrying the spear. John witnesses the man's journey and sees him heading to the hospital. At the hospital, half-breed demons are gathered, awaiting Mammon's arrival. While planning how they'll fight an army of half-breeds, Chaz chimes telling Midnight and John that half-breed demons become vulnerable when their outer skin is washed off with holy water. Angela arrives at the pool where Isabel died and sees the man carrying the spear. She shoots him, unloading a full magazine but it does not affect the man. John and Chaz arrive at the hospital, and Chaz heads to the water reservoir to bless it, turning it into holy water. John proceeds to the demons. Chaz drops a blessed holy cross into the water tank, and it turns into holy water. John faces the horde of half-breeds and declares he'll kill all of them. John places a lighter at the sprinklers, and holy water rains on them. John then dispatches each demon, shooting them to pieces. Chaz comes in just in time, and the pair head to Angela. The man drowns Angela, and she reappears in hell. She sees Mammon in the flesh, and it enters her. John finds Angela now possessed with Mammon and rushes in to exorcise the demon. Angela and John struggle, and Chaz helps to subdue her. John then starts chanting incantations over Angela, and it seemingly works as Angela snaps back to normal. For a moment, Angela takes a breath, but she suddenly feels something inside her. She starts screaming, and they see Mammon in her stomach trying to claw its way out. Chaz joins John chanting, and Mammon retreats momentarily. Chaz then suddenly gets thrown back and gets smashed several times into the floor and ceiling, getting killed instantly. John places his arms together, creating a symbol and the room's roof seems to open up. But suddenly, Gabriel drops down on John. John finally realizes that Gabriel's divine touch will give birth to Mammon as Gabriel uses the spear to cut open Angela. Gabriel says that humans have become too complacent, ignorant of the old ways of belief. Mammon's rise would cause much pain and suffering, and so, those who rise above would be truly worthy of God's love. Gabriel then holds John up, blowing him away, smashing him into a glass door. Now truly desperate, John calls on God's help. John takes a piece of glass and slits his wrists. As John bleeds, Gabriel takes the Spear of Destiny and prepares to unleash Mammon. As Gabriel brings down the blade, time stops. The devil himself then appears. Lucifer makes his way to John, who lays dying. Lucifer is excited to see John and even allows him to have one last cigarette. John then tells Lucifer that Gabriel is in the other room, about to release Mammon. 
Lucifer laughs, believing it to be a trick. But John tells him to look for himself. Lucifer then enters the room with the pool and sees the spear in Gabriel's hand, inches away from Angela. Without hesitation, Lucifer takes Angela away, saving her from the spear. Time moves again, and Gabriel is in utter shock, coming face to face with Lucifer. Gabriel prepares to smite Lucifer in God's name, but Gabriel's fist stops short. Lucifer smiles and tells Gabriel God has abandoned him. Lucifer then declares hell is still his domain and banishes Mammon back to hell while he burns Gabriel's wings off. Lucifer returns to John, now ready to take him to hell. Lucifer asks what John wants in return for warning him of Mammon's plan, and instead of asking for an extension of his life, John instead requests Isabel's soul be sent to heaven. And with one gesture, Lucifer agrees and sends Isabel to heaven. He then starts dragging John down, but John suddenly becomes extremely heavy, and he can't move him. The walls open up, and the kingdom of heaven reveals itself, accepting John. Now that he had committed a selfless sacrifice for Isabel's soul, God now accepts him. Lucifer is angered and pulls John back. He digs into John's lungs and takes out the cancer. Lucifer declares that John shall continue living, giving him more time to prove that John's soul truly belongs in hell. John wakes up with all of his wounds healed. Angela also wakes up, and the two see Gabriel in the pool. They see that Gabriel has now been turned human. Gabriel entices John to take revenge and hands him his shotgun, asking John to shoot. John instead punches Gabriel. Gabriel winces, experiencing pain for the first time. John and Angela then head to the roof, and John gives Angela the Spear of Destiny for safekeeping. Angela agrees, and the two part ways, saying they'll meet some other time again. John stares into the night, realizing that God does indeed have a plan for him. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.